Bass. You want to talk basketball now? We're talking basketball. Yeah, yeah let's I'm, do some I'm basketball. I'm glad we don't fun. sing for a living. Could. Yeah, I know, because we'd be busted. Let's start out with the team. Let's start out. Let's do the top 10, because we can't go through it. I mean, we can talk about, you know, some of these teams that are outside, like Dallas and Memphis, but fuck them. Because, you know, if you're not good enough to be in the top 10 right now, then we and ain't Kevin talking means about the you. top 10 of the uh, the power rankings we're getting off of ESPN right now. And, and coming in yeah. at number 10, who I have to say made the biggest offseason splash, would have to mm-hmm. be Kevin's Houston Rockets. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin's Houston Rockets. And, uh, you know what? Houston, it, the problem is they have right now is that that, that, that tandem they have up in the middle with Asik and, uh, Dwight Howard seems to be kind of crazy. It's not working because, uh, Houston looks better when they play fast right now. And, uh, you know, they can't, you know, they can't keep their tempo up all the time with, with other man in. Well, so well, that's kind of fucking Didn't Askey ask for a, a trade in the offseason? And they were like, he, no. He, no, they were like, no, they wanted to keep him and stuff like that. They wanted some insurance in case Dwight, you know, because he, he was, you know, bitching about his back all that. But, it, but, sounds like, but a- it sounds like even if Dwight's not in, this guy's going to kill your offense. With James Harden and Jeremy Lin in the backcourt when Jeremy mm-hmm. Lin does get in, I mean, why would you want this big, slow ogre? I mean, these guys want to push the yeah. ball and push the pace. Get Unload them. You should have yeah. unloaded them at the beginning of the season. Because I, somebody- te- I, I know at least two teams that would be more than happy to take them. Oh yeah, without a doubt, you know. Now let's go to the Bulls, Chicago. Chicago is sitting at five and three right now. All you Derrick um, Rose people who sat there and said that's the missing ingredient, eat a dick. Y'all are nothing to worry about because if that guy doesn't score, the rest of your team just stands around like they are confused and never played basketball before. See, I am not I impressed at, by them at all. I see. I disagree with you. I think Chicago is like the Clippers and they're like the Heat. They're just slow, starting off slow. Like I, it's so young. It, we haven't. Some teams haven't even played ten games yet. And and you got to think. Chicago turned around and did something that nobody's done this season. They beat the Pacers the other night. So it, you, you can see that they're starting to come together more as a team. I mean, you know how it is, George. You have somebody that's your main, man, your main ingredient, and it's been missing. And you learn to play without him. You know what I'm saying? And now he comes back in the mix for the first time in over a year. Shit's going to be fucked up. Well, I think they you know screwed up by letting Nate Robinson leave. Yeah, I mean, he, he you know, he definitely. Because he was a spark you know, off the bench. Even when Rose was there, he's a spark off the bench, and now he's gone. Now, a, a team that I think is struggling, to me, I mean, is, to me, it's Oklahoma City. Like, and I, and why I say this is because they played with, you know, Russell Westbrook most of the year. He's been back and everything, but they just seem out of sync. And you know what? Some people could say, you know, losing Harden hurt them, you know, and they don't have the same chemistry. And maybe I, I might be one of those people to agree with it, but they just don't seem like the same team, man. They just are, they're, you know, Westbrook is, he, he's, he's like what? not shooting great from the field. You know, it seems like there's no type of supporting cast for Kevin Durant. I, right I, now I can tell Oklahoma you right City. now, I like Kevin Durant enough to say, young man, you need to get away from Russell Westbrook. Let Russell yeah. Westbrook be Russell Westbrook. Westbrook to me reminds me a lot of Allen Iverson. I'm going to score right. my points. I don't care who I'm playing with you, you and you and the other, you get used to it. Cause this is how I'm going to play. And this is what I'm going to do. And he doesn't realize there's other people. I just, I've never liked him. I don't like his attitude. He's just, he's nasty. He's just, he's just a dick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't, yeah, yeah. He, he, dude, yeah, he's a yeah, dick. Yeah, I gotta like, agree seriously, with you. that that kid, and he's a kid because I'm much he's older than him. Got, he's a fucking he's dickhead. Got a he's got a chip on his shoulder, without a and, doubt. You know what I'm saying? I, and Sometimes I have no idea why. Good. When you're that good and you can get to the basket that easy and you can score so well, but yeah. you you easily have one of the elite score, not just players, but elite players not right. not Matt Stafford type elite I'm talking about elite like Drew Brees Peyton Manning type elite on your right. team get him the damn ball I don't know if you caught that Ramon but do you want to repeat that who's elite and how they elite and how do you classify elite <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, let's go on to Portland, Portland. okay Portland um, look good because they beat the Spurs, and the Spurs' only loss came from Portland. But the thing is, is Portland always looks good at home. And the problem was, is last year, Portland was terrible when they were on the road. And uh, that that is one thing that seems to be changing uh, in Portland. They, they're they doing pretty good on the road this year, and they're 8-2. And, and that, you know, I it still remains to be seen because we're early in the season. But if Portland can continue to win on the road – then that is a team that you better not sleep on because they got a lot of talent up there in fucking uh, 
in Oregon. So, uh, Golden State, um, they're seven and three. Uh, I, I don't know what to say about them. They look, look the same. You know what I'm saying? I mean, obviously, you know, Mark Jackson's doing a good job up there, but it's like, uh, I, I don't think there's anything spectacular. So I just, I really feel that Golden State needs one more player to really to to make that push in the West. I feel like they're going to be a playoff team. They're going to probably win a playoff series, maybe, but I don't ever think they're going to get too far back. You know, much farther than that. You know, I just think when you rely when you rely so heavily on outside scoring and up and down the court basketball, mm-hmm. that's not what wins in the playoffs. It's de- it's, yes. it's de- what wins in basketball. I find this ironic. What wins in the NBA playoffs is the same thing that wins in the NFL playoffs. Yeah, no. defense in a slow down game. Like you need to be able to run and you need to play half court and play defense. And in the NFL, you need to be able to run the ball and play defense. It's yeah, true. And, and and one of the things that uh, one team that's lo- doing looking pretty good at defense, um, surprisingly good at defense this year is Minnesota Timberwolves. And they're one of the teams that we got in the top ten. And uh, they they're they're like ranked fifth or sixth in defense in the league right now. But what's really surprising about them is that that duo and Kevin Love and uh. Kevin Martin. I mean, they're, they're right now they're the highest scoring duo in the NBA. Isn't that fucking crazy? Kevin Love and Kevin Martin. Yes, Kevin Love is nasty. And and you know yeah. I was hard on Kevin Love when he first came into the league because he was still mm-hmm. kept all the baby fat, didn't look interested. But he's got right. his body in incredible shape, and it shows night in and night out. People are amazed at how much of an athlete this guy is. And I'm like, did you watch him in college? Did you see any of his high school film? The dude gets oh, it fun. done. I mean, he's an incredible oh. athlete. He really is, man. I mean, he's he's you know he's one of those guys that's just. I think what it boils down to being a white guy and a domi- and a sport dominated by black dudes. They don't think a white guy can do half the shit he does. Yeah, and it's funny because to some degree it is a skin thing, man. Because you look at some people that don't look the part, you know, like uh, Big Baby Glenn Davis, and when he was in Boston, but he was balling like shit. Yeah. He didn't look like a basketball player, but that guy fucking could ball. Can you, know you imagine? I mean? Can you imagine if we could go back in time and listen to the shit Larry Bird caught? Oh my God, dude! Because he didn't, you know that, and you know you see back and you look. Even Moses Malone, he didn't look the part. There's a lot of guys that didn't look like these, like LeBron James. Now that's what you see is these athletic guys, and you're like, holy shit! You know, guys that look like Blake Griffin, you know, LeBron James, and you're thinking every basketball. But that that's a great segue right into the Clippers and Blake Twinkie Griffin. I can't stand that soft ass Bama. Now, this is funny because the team, and, and you know what, I mean, uh, you know, Matt Barnes couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> you know, it's, but I will say this, the Clippers started out slow and I would, it, for a while I was going, okay, I, I know Doc, you know, Rivers is coaching them. They're going to be good. You know, you got a, you know, a great coach. And I'm like, is it just, and you know, Doc was like, it's chemistry. He's getting everything together, these guys. And now all of a sudden. They've rattled off a bunch of wins. CP3 has gone, had uh, double doubles that ten, that ten for ten benchmark. He's all in every game this season. And if he actually this in the eleventh game, if he gets uh, uh, ten assists and ten points, he will tie Magic Johnson's record starting out of season, eleven straight games. So he, he's he's being consistent. They're looking better. How They're can you? But seriously, how could you not get ten assists playing on that team? Night in and night out. If he doesn't do any, he should easily be able to get ten assists every single night well, playing on that team. But that that's the catcher. That's see, that's the thing. When you get ten assists, that means it, yeah, it is it, it's easy. But at the same time, when you're dishing the ball ball off that much, then so it makes it a little bit more difficult to get ten points. You that's know what I mean? Five, so, man, when, come on, man. He's a point I, guard. Yeah. He touches the ball ninety three point nine percent of the damn time. He's in complete control. If he wants to shoot, no one's gonna say shit. <laughs> no one's going to say shit. That's true. But it, the record he is going it doing right now is pretty impressive. And now the did that underrated, shit. undisputed, two-time defending NBA champs, the Heat. Oh, please let these bitches lose this year so I don't have to hear Big Head's mouth. But, yes. The, now, this is another thing. They're 7-3. and three. And For everybody mm-hmm. out there who is saying, oh, the Heat, they don't look good, there, sh- please shut the fuck up, okay? It's too early in the season to s- fucking... I, when people start saying that shit in basketball season, I just look at them and roll my eyes and be like, please shut the fuck up because you don't know what you're talking about. Miami, they don't need to fucking go balls to the wall right now. It's fucking 82 game season. They're the defending two time champions. They've got LeBron James, the best player in basketball right now. And mm-hmm. you know what? Why kill themselves? You know what I'm saying? Especially in the conference they're in where the only team that looks like they're really 
good right now are the Pacers. <laughs> do you and, know? And, and do, you, do you want to take a stab at how many career blocks Dwayne Wade has? Mm, 200. 673. I would have never thought that. Holy and shit. I just I find that strange because it says D Wade is just two swats away from passing Dennis Johnson. 675 is the best shot blocker in league history at 6'4 and under. That seems a really, really high. Yeah, but the D- 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 Wade has some hops, dude, and he is a good defensive player. And see, it's things like that that people don't pay attention to because you, you look at all the – people don't pay attention to the skills. Like you and I were talking before the cameras, talk, we were talking about Chris Bosh, and I'm like, you know what? People focus on LeBron and people focus on Wade, and you know what? Chris Bosh won that last championship for him because he's the one that kept – he's the one that basically won game six for him, kept him alive so they could have a game seven. You know what I mean? So Dude, it, they have so many in role two, players. Huh? In, in the 2008-2009 season, that Bama had 106 blocks. Who? Dwayne Wade. Yeah. Yeah. Holy you shit. Know? He's got he seven got this thing, season. Man, he, won a, he won a championship. Him and Shaq won a championship in 05. So, I mean, he's been getting it done. Now, Damn. let's move on to the Pacers. That man's going okay. to the Hall of Fame, son. Yeah, he is. He is. Now, the Pacers man, are 9-1. the one. Pacers. Huh? Fuck the Pacers. See, George says fuck the Pacers because he knows deep down that this could be, this is a young team, they're big, they're physical, they he, have a chip on their shoulder, and this could present a problem at the end of the season. And, and when, you know what? But, I'm going to tell you, like, I think who, I was talking to Kerry when we, when we were at the house, and we were talking about the right. Pacers. And um, mm-hmm. the thing, I honestly, I'm most impressed with about the Pacers, it's one thing when everyone calls or thinks you're a superstar, it's right. another thing when they all start pushing you to be the superstar. And what I mean by that right. is Paul George. Paul George is right. we were told last year how great he was. This right. year, this year we're being told that it's his team and he's the next next great player and right mm-hmm. now he's living up to it. And and that's different. It's different when the spotlight's on you and night in and night out the best defender is going to be on you. People are going to be right. gunning for you and they're not going to want you to score because they want to be the guy that shuts you down that night. And right. when you're still getting it done with that kind of pressure, you I I can't you you can't argue with that. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you the dude's a bum just cuz he's a pacer, but I mean right. he's going to pose he's- a threat. I mean he's he's nasty. Right. He's he is definitely nasty, man. And you know what? The the Pacers the last three years have looked very consistent and 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 not only is being consistent, like George said, they're getting better. Because now these these guys that were young two years ago, three years ago, are now becoming veterans. And they're used to being like in the heat of the battle. They're used to being play, they're used to going up against these teams like the Heat and the Bull and the Knicks and you know, they're in the Celtics. They're used to, to doing that. So they're the team that's evolving now. And they're they're kind of evolving like the, the Thunder were a couple of years ago. But they're still together as a unit and they seem very focused. And I can and, tell you I can tell you right now if the 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 Thunder and the Pacers are play in a seven game series tomorrow I'm gonna take the Pacers. Because they oh, are a team. They play as a team and in the mm-hmm. end that's what's beautiful about basketball the better team usually wins in a seven yep, game exactly. series in a one yep. game series the team with more athletes will probably win i'd say probably 80 percent of the time but the better right. team like the spurs like the pacers like the celtics used to have like the heat have um like the lakers used to have when, when you have yeah. a team you have a core of five or six guys who have been there year in and year out you build mm-hmm. a dynasty and you consistency and that's and, the key and, and, and since, since we're talking about team let's go to san antonio who's sure. sitting again at nine and one and 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 the reason they're they're always good. They're always in it. And and Popovich. what was the stat you you threw at me before? It's because of Greg Popovich. He creates a team atmosphere and makes them all play together as a unit. And you know what? They were right there last year. They almost had a championship. You better believe their asses will be in it right now. They're starting out nine and one. If they uh, win, I mean, if they win fifty basketball games this season, it will be fifteen consecutive seasons of fifty wins. And I and when I look at that, and I said it last year too. When I look at Pop, I look at his talent, and he has some good talent. But let me tell you something: he never had a fucking LeBron. He, ne- I mean, Duncan at one time, but he never had two and three guys like that. I mean, you could say Duncan. He brought Parker in, and they developed that. You know what I'm and saying? Ginobili. And you know, Ginobili, you know, developed. But he never went after and got people like Kobe. You know, he never went and put together a team. He just. Players came in young and they developed, and that's what you saw. You saw last year when they were in the championship. All these players that just kind of, you know, I think he got Jefferson, but you know, all these players that 
he just brought in and they learned to play as a family, as a unit, and they're always a threat. And I tell you what, man, they're, they look, you think, people think, uh, uh, Tim Duncan, you think old and everything like this, but everything that is around Tim Duncan and uh, Ginobili and all them is young. And Tony Parker is young. That, that, that so, the rest of that team is young as shit. If if they you win, I mean? if they win another fifty games, just fifty. Let's say if all they did, that's seven hundred and fifty wins. Yeah, that's how seven. many coaches. I would like to know his winning percentage, his career winning percentage. It's crazy. Popovich, it's Popovich cr- is nasty. No one, I can tell you right now, there's not another NBA coach who's done what he. I well, in the modern era, I mean, we're not taking back the Red Arbach and shit, but I would love to have seen. If he had Phil Jackson, if he had Jordan and Kobe and Shaq and all of them, if he had Phil Jackson's teams and Phil Jackson had his teams. Well, well I, I like mean, take, how it, many... take it even to ownership because it's ownership that destroyed that team. It, yeah. It's Reinsdorf. I mean, can you imagine if Reinsdorf would have just shut his mouth and paid those people their money? They would have yeah. gone down. I mean, a lot of people are already going to say that was the greatest conglomerate ever. But to yeah. think about what could have happened if Reinsdorf would have kept his mouth shut, Jordan might have yeah. won six in a row, eight in a row, nine in a row. It'd have been nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was. It sh- God, man. Anyway, we gotta shut the fuck up, everybody. Comments below. I gotta fucking get this shit out. Um, George, it's been real. Congratulations once again for your Philadelphia Eagles. Caw-caw, caw-caw. And on that note, adios, deuces. <laughs>